for Antonio Barrera for a third time, looks for vengeance against Bobby Boy Velardez, who beat Morales' brother Diego last year on a ninth round disqualification. Well, we're hoping that uh, we will have an outstanding uh, undercard fight as well. As a matter of fact, we should, because as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, we do have a special treat for you on the undercard. 126-pound title holder Eric Morales taking on Bobby Boy Velardes. Morales, an outstanding fighter, and he is standing by in his locker room with our own Mario Solis. Mario? Thank you, JP. Just minutes away from Eric Morales defending his featherweight title. Obviously, he feels like he's been in this place before. This is not a rematch, but Eric has been with his brother training for a fight that took place one year ago when his brother Diego was disqualified against Bobby Borbillardis. So this time, Eric Morales feels like there is a, a score to settle. ¿Tienes tu cierta venganza en la mente después de que Bobby Boy derrotase a tu hermano el año pasado? Bueno, yo creo que poco. Yo creo que vamos, vamos a enseñarle hoy esta noche lo que es, lo que es pelea con un pluma de verdad. Mi hermano es un 115 y vamos a echarle todas las ganas. Eric says he wants to show what Bobby Boy exactly what it is to fight against a true featherweight. He has also indicated that uh, when Bobby Boy was in uh, Tijuana, which is uh, Eric's uh, native town, he was uh, disrespectful. Mencionaste tú que había faltado el respeto al público, Bobby Boy, cuando estuvo en tu ciudad. Eh, ¿Eso le agrega algo a esa motivación? Claro que sí. Yo creo que el hecho de decir que que no hablaba con la prensa ni con los mexicanos porque le fueran a dar una infección es algo 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 que no está dentro de lo deportivo. It was quite upsetting for Eric uh, when Bobby Boy was in Tijuana that he didn't want to talk to reporters or even shake hands because he was afraid of catching some sort of disease. Now, um, obviously, this is an important fight for him. Uh, Bobby Boy had to train for five months while Eric had to train for five weeks. Tú entrenaste cinco semanas, dice Bobby Boy, que entrenó cinco meses. Obviamente, tú eres el gran favorito. La diferencia en el entrenamiento. Bueno, yo creo que estamos acostumbrados a hacer un entrenamiento muy profesional. Sabemos nuestro trabajo muy bien. Creo que hicimos lo correcto. Estamos listos y ojalá le aprovechen cinco meses de trabajo. He feels he's ready with the five weeks. However, he says that, well, if Bobby Boy had to do five months of preparation, well, then uh, I guess it's going to be a good fight. Finally, there's been some uh, uh, also an issue with the weight. Just as Arce had a problem, Eric uh, was one pound over the weight limit and had to come back a couple of hours later to uh, come in in the uh, featherweight uh, limit. ¿Algún problema con, con el peso? ¿Te recuperaste apropiadamente en las últimas 27 horas? Oh, realmente creo que eh, fue mucho trabajo, pero estamos muy bien. Eh, hemos tenido la recuperación exacta. Estamos muy bien y listos para la pelea. Absolutely ready. He said uh, there was a lot of work involved and uh, a little struggle, but he finally ended up making the weight. That leads us to our final question, which is, will this be his graduation from the 126-pound division? ¿Será esta tu última pelea en las 126 libras, a pesar de que Marco Antonio Barrera te espera en esta división? Bueno, realmente toda la gente se dio cuenta de los problemas que tengo. Es una realidad que debo de subir de peso. Me encantaría, pero debo de cambiar de peso. Si, si quiere, con mucho gusto, en 130, ahí estamos. Eric says now it is an obligation for him to go up to 130. He simply cannot make the 126 uh, weight limit. And if Barrera wants to follow him in that division, well, then that's up to Marco Antonio. Back to you, JB. All right, Mario, thank you so very much. And an awful lot of ground covered in that interview by Mario Solis with uh, Eric Morales. And uh, that fight between uh, Morales and Bobby Boy Velarde's will be taking place at about 6.55 p.m. Pacific time, just about six minutes from now. And um, a number of topics that Mario talked about, disrespect shown to uh, Eric Morales' brother, Diego. Uh, you talked about disease. Um, Diego concerned about, or uh, Velarde is concerned about catching a disease. We'll, we'll cover all of that. As a matter of fact, Jim Lampley will, as they set the stage for this, next bout. As a matter of fact, let's go back downstairs and talk to the guys once again as they set the stage for the upcoming bout. Eric Morales and Bobby Borvillard is back down to Jim Lampley. All right. Thank you very much, JB. Of course, Eric Morales has been the headliner on pay-per-view cards. Here he is fighting as the last preliminary prior to an Oscar De La Hoya bout. And George Foreman, uh, Eric Morales is a great fighter, one of the very best in the sport, but he has had a habit of fighting at less than his absolute best when he fights in in fights against seemingly lesser opponents like this can a fighter like Morales be honest enough to say to himself you know I really wasn't all that good against Goody Espatis and I wasn't you know particularly great in in some of my other fights when I wasn't on a star night uh, and and discipline himself to do better at fighting in an off attraction like this then or is it or is it always just gonna be that way if that's who you are no, uh, one thing a boxer got to deal with, you get in that ring, you better come out with the W. You better win. 
trying to uh, quiet your critic critics and all of that stuff you better leave that to Hollywood <laughs> a fight you get out of it alive you've done something forget about what they say your paycheck and your good health that's all that matters well we'll see what Morales brings to the table tonight in a fight that he expects to win easily against Bobby Boy Velardis of course Larry Merchant I said he's a great fighter he ranks either one or one a whatever your preference is between him and Barrera in the featherweight division give us your look at the top 126 pound fighters in the world uh, this has been a kind of golden age of featherweights, actually, uh, making more money than featherweights ever dreamed of before. And here you can see that uh, Barrera and Morales, they're 1 and 1A. One uh, however you see them, Marquez, another Mexican fighter, a lot of people think he'd give either one of them uh, problems. And, of course, uh, Smoke Gaynor uh, from Pensacola is another uh, featherweight who has a title. Now, um, there's a sort of trumped-up revenge motive going into this fight because, as Mario Solis mentioned, a year ago, Bobby Boy Velardes went to Tijuana and fought against Eric Morales' younger and, as a fighter, lesser brother. And in that fight, Eric Morales dominated, or Diego Morales, I should say, Diego Morales dominated prior to a strange stoppage at the end. Larry, here's what happened on April 5 in Tijuana last year. Yeah, there were four knockdowns by Morales, uh, won by Bobby Boy. Uh, they were kind of, some of them were strange, off-balance knockdowns, uh, but Morales was dominating the fight, and there you see that a second from Morales's corner came into the ring prematurely, uh, hearing the 10-second warning, and Morales was disqualified in his hometown of Tijuana. Um, whether Bobby Boy uh, re reacted well to Tijuana is something we can't really say. Uh, I know that his father, who is uh, an interesting character in his own right, four, four sons, all of whom are fighters, his father and his grandfather all were fighters, and he says he went down there and that uh, Morales sort of had a one foot on the scale way in, <laughs> so they were looking for anything to happen to them, and it, and it did. But it also happened to Morales. Yeah. Uh, and incidentally, it was the <laughs> governing body official who was supervising the fight who uh, disqualified Morales and gave the win to Velardis because local officials in Tijuana <laughs> weren't about to do that. They were going to let the fight continue. George, in recent years, uh, Eric Morales has gotten understandably tired of having to talk all the time about uh, Marco Antonio Barrero because they fought twice. Their rivalry is constantly discussed in Mexico. But he measures himself partially, according to Barrera. When Barrera had a relatively dull performance against Johnny Tappy in December, Eric came in and lit the place up two weeks uh, later against Paulie Ayala, and clearly he was motivated to look better than Barrera. Barrera recently fought Kevin Kelly in what was a, a very easy fourth-round knockout, but it was recent enough that people remember it. You suppose Eric is motivated once again to put Barrera in the shade by knocking out Velardis in a hurry tonight? I think he don't even have to be that motivated at all. Morales, he's the champion. He's got a belt. <laughs> you better make certain to, to, to know the difference, they say. Uh, uh, the wisdom to know the difference. He's in a, a great position. Why he should reach out for guys who are not champion is an odd thing to me. He's the man to beat, Morales. Eric Morales, who says, incidentally, regardless of the Barrera talk and the possibility of a third fight, Morales says, hey, this is definitely my last fight at 126 pounds. I'm going up to 130 after this. If Barrera wants to fight me, he can come up, come up and fight me at 130, or maybe conceivably will do it at a catch weight of 128. But he establishes, for his part, that he's absolutely certain he'll never fight Barrera again at 126. You believe him, Larry? I sort of do. But uh, Barb Arum, his promoter, and perhaps Morales' people, really want him to fight again at 126 for Barrera because it is such a big fight with such a big purse. But I think that, the, that Morales is serious. I think he's made enough money to be able to be serious about this. And I think what will happen, uh, what may very well happen, is that he will move to 130 in that two years from now, they'll fight again just as uh, Ali and Fraser fought their third fight years after their first uh, two. So will it be in Manila? Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's another story. All right, let's the take a look at the, in Vegas. the thrill in Vegas. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for Eric Morales against Fernando Bobby Boy Velardes. 
And you'll see that Morales is a veteran of the sport at age 26. He's been fighting as a pro for 10 years now. Height, two-inch advantage for Morales. Weight, um, they'll go into the ring with a seven-pound differential as Morales is all the way up to 141 unofficially and therefore outweighs Velardis unofficially by seven pounds. Reach, measured all the way across the back from fingertip to fingertip. Morales with a six-inch advantage. Arm length, measured from the underarm to the end of the fist. And look at that. Velardis comes out with a one-inch advantage there. So what that means is that Morales is by far broader across the back and the shoulders, but Velardis, who has unusually long arms, is slightly longer of arm than the lanky Morales. Rules of the bout with our unofficial lanky ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. <laughs> the Eric morales bobby Boa fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules that you see on your screen. Jim, real quickly, the four criteria that the judges are going to use to score each individual round, clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Jim. Thank you, Harold. And now let's bring young Bobby Boy Velardis into the ring. High school graduate of San Bernardino High School. Comes from a boxing family. All five brothers were fighters and his father as well. We first saw him a couple of years ago when he pulled off an upset as he was still a senior in high school. He has been fighting in the Inland Empire, California, near his hometown of San Bernardino, and has reeled off a winning streak after having accumulated four losses early in his career when he was really apprenticing on the job. But the danger sign against an aggressive, offensive fighter like Eric Morales is that Velardis gets hit. And if you go into a fight and, and trade with a puncher like Eric Morales, you're not likely to last very long unless you're just as big a hitter as he is. And if that happens, he will have made, however, uh, the biggest payday of his career, an estimated $175,000 purse for his team. So Velardis quietly steps into the ring. And we await the emergence of Eric Morales from Tijuana. Morales, as usual, and you mentioned this earlier, Larry, starts to the bone to make 126 pounds. All right. One of those fighters who has to uh, exist on water and air for much of the last week before a fight in order to make weight and then still struggles. But while everyone is talking about him fighting Barrera again, he's talking about fighting Floyd Mayweather in a year and a half or so at lightweight. What a bonanza for Floyd Mayweather. Here's a star fighter who wants to fight him. Imagine that. Mayweather's been talking about moving up to fight Oscar De La Hoya. That's 19 pounds up the weight scale from Mayweather's present weight of 135. If he sits tight, maybe he can make some money with Eric El Terrible Morales. Year in and year out, one of the top 10 fighters pound for pound. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino of Las Vegas, Top Rank Incorporated presents a world championship bout sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The three judges at ringside scoring this contest on the 10-point Mustang will be Bert Clements, Arthur Mercanti, and Dave Moretti. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Kenny Bayless. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Featherweight Championship of the World. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trimmed with white, and officially weighing 126 pounds, his professional record, 24 victories, including six knockouts against four defeats with one draw. 
He comes to us from the Mal Vernon neighborhood of San Bernardino, California. He's the current USBA featherweight champion, the challenger, Fernando Bobby Boy Velarde. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black, trimmed with silver, also weighing 126 pounds. His professional record, 43 victories, including 32 knockouts with only one defeat. Damas y caballeros de la zona norte, Tijuana, Mexico, the three-time world champion and reigning, defending WBC featherweight champion of the world, Eric El Terrible Okay, gentlemen, trunks are high here. So any punch thrown in this area is okay. Trunks are high here, any punch thrown in this area, okay. Now, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I'm gonna caution you to keep the fight clean at all times and protect yourself at all times. And remember, what I say, you must obey. Good luck, Venezuela. This could be the last time we see an outstanding featherweight fight in that class. But Morales is only 26 years old and has some big fights in front of him. What a record. 43 wins, one loss, 32 KOs. Going against Fernando Bobby Boy Velardes, who has a tendency to get hit and has light power only. Only six knockouts among his 24 wins. So Velardes comes out of the grin out of the corner. Fighting aggressively, throwing his jab and stepping forward behind it as he tries to seize the initiative early against Eric Morales. Morales is, is an outstanding boxer with all kind of skills, jabs, right hand. It makes easy fights hard. You can always count on him making a fight hard for himself. Why Doesn't do you, have to at all. Why do you think he does that, George? I don't know. There's a lot of skill to boxing, and believe me, he's got the skill. Does he fight down to his opponents? Is that what you're saying? No, it's just that he's decided, look, I don't care about the rules. I'm going to break them. I'm going to mix it up. You knock me down. I'm going to get cut. I'm going to get bruised. Doesn't need that. He can jab and win this fight with a left hand if he chooses to. For some reason, he's going to make a fight hard. Do you think he suspects that this is the style of fighting that will be appreciated in his self-consciously rough home section of Zona Norte in Tijuana? Uh, just something that I, I don't know what it is. It's just something inside of him. He I'm tags the Lardis down the middle with a left and a right hand over the top. Morales, who looked almost bored during the pre-fight instructions from the referee, looking at the canvas, making no contact, eye contact with Velardis at all. Seemed to be a little bit lackadaisical the first 30 seconds of the fight. Now he's stepping up and trading with Velardis. And Velardis still willing to seize the initiative and go forward and throw the jab and throw combinations of punches behind him. He's, he's, he's got all the skill, but he'll find himself against the rope, taking unnecessary punch, punches to his body, to his head. Oh, there's a big right hand feint by Morales. He clocked Velardis with the left. Bobby Boy fell for the feint like a mullet going after a piece of bread. <laughs> Bobby Boy reaches in, gets one shot to the body. And I think a right hand uh, hurt Velardis. Velardis momentarily in don't close. Hold him, don't hold him. Stay up. A little bit of a scrape on Morales' nose. Well, I mentioned Morales' indifferent performance against Gutierrez Spada. Same thing against a Korean fighter named Injun Chi. 
when he fought on a Roy Jones undercard. Here, he knocks Ballardis down in the first round with a hard left hand. And the bell will sound to end the round as soon as Kenny, as soon as Kenny Bayless is finished with this count. That's, that saved the round for Morales because he was losing it up until that punch. Give me the bag, give me the bag. Come on, baby, come on. Pay attention. Listen. Breathe, baby, breathe. Breathe. L listen to me. Hands up to him. What you're doing is you let him do what he wants. You're on the outside. I told you his power is on the outside. Side to side movement. Breathe in, Jay. Breathe as you can. Hey, he got all burnt breathe. out for losing breathe. the weight. Breathe. Catch your breath. Struggle. Listen to me. Breathe, baby. Come on. Left uppercut right. Move, slip his jab, and right hand over his jab, and uppercut, right hand hook. Right. Don't stay there. I mean, it looked as though Morales knew that something was going to work before the round, and there you saw it, a long left hook with a couple of seconds left. Fortunate. In the round, by copy box numbers, Velardis had thrown 97 punches. He landed... 35 of the 97. Meanwhile, Morales only threw 53 punches in the round, but as Larry pointed out, Morales wins the round on the basis of the knockdown at the end. The size differential between these two fighters is not nearly what it was in the first fight, but Morales coming into the fight was actually at the welterweight weight, 141, up from 126, which he uh, needed a couple of extra hours to make yesterday. What a bunch of op uh, offensive opportunities should be here for Morales, George Foreman, as it seems to me that Velardis throws long punches slowly and tends to leave his hands there after he throws them. Well, he's everything that should open up, make Morales open up his arsenal now. The right hands have hurt Velardis, but he fires back. He's got everything to make him look good tonight, but yet this guy is standing there with him. Activity from Velardis. Morales kind of watches and now grinning because he Vel feels that enormous confidence. Yeah, because he, he knows Velardis can hit him, but he can't hurt him. Stop, stop, step back. So that's the fifth knockdown that Velardis has suffered from the Morales family so far. But he's 1 0 against the Moraleses so far. <laughs> Good body, right hand to the body by Morales. Talk about a guy who chronically fights up or down to the level of the opponent. Morales looks so sharp, so definitive, so precise in his movements against Pauli Ayala in December. Here he's trading wild shots with a wild slugger who has no power. Well, there's something exciting about not knowing what you're going to get from Morales in any particular fight. Work out, work out, work out. No, what happened is he has to get into a fight to really fight. He just can't seem to use his superior skill. It has to be a fight. Nothing wrong with that, George. Oh, that's a hard right hand. Hardest punch of the fight landed by Morales, and Millard has held on. Oh, holy. Eric is just looking to target the right hand again. Digging left hooks the body. There's another right hand over the top by Morales. Velardis is hurt again. Morales attacks him along the ropes. Morales almost, uh, Velardis almost went down again. Official clock here started was told, was, uh, we're told we started 10 seconds early. So that round only lasted 2.52. Keep your distance. Breathe deep. Breathe deep. You gotta finish him. Finish him. Yeah. Yeah. Don't stay. Don't stay so close because he's rough there. Come on. It, this, you gotta be intelligent. Instead of being strong, make intelligent. Yeah. Yeah. Once you hit him, he doesn't know what to do. If you're gonna be too aggressive, you gotta use your quickness. Do you hear me? Yeah. Get a good run. Look, right hand and a bubble cup. Jab a hook right. One, two, palm Don't protect this muscle. You hit him back. 
Round three begins. One knockdown so far in the fight. Eric Morales knocking Bobby Villardis down toward the end of the first round. Seemed to hurt him twice in the second round with right hands. Villardis is still coming in here and throwing punches as the aggressor. left jab. Morales has got a su the su probably the superior jab in the whole weight class, in his weight class. Doesn't like to use it. Hard right hand to the body by Morales. Lardis slightly wobbly again as Morales tries to strafe him with right hands. Yeah, Morales him on the chin. Morales just seems to be breaking him down right here. This may be a job for the corner when they decide when do I throw in the towel here. Well, and of course, his trainer and cut man is his father. Armando uh -oh. Pilar Sr. That means we won't see a towel. That's right. Or at is least he, that's usually the case. Because he's taking a body beating and he's finishing up with a left jab, Morales says. And so not much this fellow will able, be able to do. He's going to get weaker for the long haul and he's going to get bust up, busted up with the jab. Villardis lands a little right hand, but Villardis' punches are relatively soft. <laughs> Morales ducks, slips, most of them. When Villardis lands, it's usually at the end of a long trajectory. And the longer your hands spend on the path of the punch, the more they slow down. Dance move by Villardis, not a knockdown. Hard right hand again by Morales across the top. Velardis is stunned again. Bobby Velardis is nothing if not game. Rough, sloppy fight. Eric Morales hitting Bobby Velardis over and over with right crosses. And let's listen to referee Vic Draculich with Oscar De La Hoya. Very important. If the opponent, your opponent goes down on a knee, you're helpless in the ropes, don't take that last punch. Because if you do, and I deem it to be a late punch, it'll still be considered as a knockdown. But instead of only getting 10 seconds to recover from that knockdown, I'm going to call time. I'm going to make a determination if he can continue. If he can, I'm going to take one or two points from you. And if he can't, I'm in all likelihood going to disqualify you as a result of that late blow. So if he goes down, stop, get back to that neutral corner. Things I'll be watching for is that rabbit punches, kitty punches, low blows, use of the elbows and shoulders. Just want a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions? Good luck to you in there. All right. Good luck to you. Ah, that means someone has been telling them to look out for Oscar's elbows and shoulders. I don't like what that. What about the late hit part? I mean, Oscar doesn't have a, hit a history of hitting people late. Yeah, maybe it's just to throw that in so he could warn him about the elbow, the elbow and the shoulders. And that's what Oscar needs. Copy box numbers in round three. Morales 31 out of 69 for 45 percent. Velardis 11 out of 77. You have to admire Velardis' bravery in still trying to throw 77 punches when he's getting hit so hard on the counters by Morales. Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim, 30 to 26, three rounds to nothing. Eric El Terrible Morales. You know, Jim, you got to give him an extra point for the knockdown of round one when, when he threw that fake with the left, with the right hand and dropped him with the left hand. But Eric Morales is throwing so hard that every time he lands a left hand to the head, Bobby Boy Velarde's head snaps back. When he lands a body punch, he virtually doubles over Velarde's. I mean, you can see the power in Eric Morales' punches. <laughs> oh. 
lot of his mouth is wide open. Body punching, jabs are starting to get him. There, and yet there is now blood coming from the left nostril of Morales. To the, to the floor. Seven, eight, okay. That was a six-punch volley. This is when I told you someone should save him with the towel now because if the ring gets knocked down, he's going to tell the ref, yes, I'm okay. Convincing okay from Velardis. You'll no. never expect a boxer to say he's not okay. You can forget that. Velardis isn't throwing back. There's the second knockdown of the round, the third knockdown of the fight. And Kenny oh. Bayless, I think, should pay attention to the fact that Velardis didn't really throw a punch in that sequence. You okay? You want to fight? Come to me. Morales is about three feet away and ready to jump. He knows there are only six, 15 seconds left in the round. You know, it's interesting. Velardis doesn't seem dazed so much as just hurt. He's just hurting all over. The very game Bobby Velardis manages to make it out of round four. Bobby, come on, get out. Okay. The body punches are really hurting Velardis. Among other things. This is just an honest workhorse fighting a thoroughbred. And the workhorse has just gone about as far as he can go. As Morales just is throwing hard pinpoint shots. Early on in the fight, Morales was too impatient to get this kind of work done. Now he's slowed down just enough to measure Velardis and place his punches where they matter. So a slightly more relaxed Eric Morales getting closer to terminating his affair with Bobby Boy Velardis. And maybe his love for the featherweight division. Oh, I don't think he has any love for making 126 pounds. Love that ain't. Well, it's brought him a lot in boxing, and it will be a, it's not a tearful farewell, we can say that. But as George suggested earlier, some fighters are always going to have trouble making weight. My guess is Morales will have difficulty making 130 after he goes up to 130. He can go up to 147. He's still going to find <laughs> Rough to make one part of that. Just that kind of guy, huh? Yep. Well, I'm thinking about Alexis Arguello, who's also a rangy featherweight, moved up to 30, then 35, then 40. Giving up a little punching power each time. And Kenny that's, Bayless has seen it up now. That's when they get hurt when they get these long beatings like that one punch after another fourth knockdown of the fight first knockdown of the fifth round and a knockout victory for eric morales a workman like look he's standing over, over him with his fist up for the camera which is not that's no taste at all unsportsmanlike that's terrible i thought he was a good guy well, that must have something to do with the so-called revenge motive against Velardis for coming down to Tijuana and behaving in such a way that the Moraleses were infuriated. They thought Velardis was well, you know, disdainful you, you, of Tijuana. You shoot, you shoot the deer as the replay. Yeah, here's the replay. But 
those punches didn't do it. It's been done. Accumulation of punishment from all the rounds it's happened before. happened a lot earlier. And it makes you wonder, Jim, whether he was just trying to punish him through those early rounds because of his emotional feelings about the kid. And this is when the fighters get hurt when a guy starts pinpointing body shots, head shots, and don't try to finish you off. Yeah. Good stoppage by Kenny Bayless. Certainly there was no competitive issue. It was abundantly clear who was going to win the fight and how. Just a matter of time. Yeah, those hunters, once they get a deer or an animal down, then they hold them up, stand over them for a photograph. That's the kind of thing he just did over our, his opponent. You wouldn't that, approve of it in hunting, and you don't approve of it in boxing, right? Yeah, well, I'm not going to say with hunting. You can eat the meat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Michael Buffer for official particulars on the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Kenny Bayless calls a halt to this contest. The official time, one minute, two seconds of round number five. The winner by TKO victory and still the WBC featherweight champion of the world, Eric El Terrible Morales. Copy box numbers. Interestingly, Velarde's Threw more punches, throwing 52 more punches in the fight, landing only 15%. And uh, they were dangerous punches because they were long and slow and left a lot of room for Eric Morales to counter in between. Morales landing 48% of all his punches. And I'm sure that he will turn out to have been over 50% in the power punch category. Then we'll take a look at the jab numbers. And you can see that Morales landed 46% uh, of 105 jabs thrown as opposed to Velardis. Nine out of 115, despite the fact Velardis, as we showed you in the tail of the tape, had longer arms than Morales. Larry Merchant standing by with the winner. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Eric. Did you want to punish your opponent because of the troubles in Tijuana with your brother a year ago? ¿Querías tú castigar a tu oponente por lo que pasó en Tijuana hace un año? Ese era el primer, el primer tema, ¿no? Después del pesaje, lo que pasó, de decidí salir a noquear. Lamentablemente, el exceso de haber bajado de peso, me, me, me he cansado ya a la hora de estar peleando. No, no me sentí con tanta soltura como en otras ocasiones. That was the plan before the weigh-in, and because I had uh, difficulty making the weight, and, uh, and I wasn't uh, as sharp as I should have been. After he was down and the fight was over, you said something to him while he was still on the canvas. What did you say to him and why? Después que se terminó la, la, la pelea, que él estaba en, en la lona, tú le dijiste, le dijiste algo. ¿Qué fue lo que le dijiste? Ah, no le dije nada. No le dijiste nada cuando no. estaba en la lona. He no. didn't say anything. Fui a festejar mi esquina y me tomé unas fotos como trofeo. No, no, no le dijiste nada al peleador. No, nada. He, said he didn't say anything to the fighter while he was down. Uh, let's go to this matter of weight. Is was this your last fight at 126 pounds? Vamos a tratar esto de 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 tu peso. Esta es su última pelea en la 126. Yo creo que sí. Estoy muy cansado, pero bueno, pues aquí está. Bob, ¿qué puede decir? ¿Qué qué qué podemos hacer? 126 o 130. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, Bob Arum here can tell you what what uh, my next fight is. Is going to be at 26 or 30? Well, I don't know what that means. You've told everyone in the media that this would be your last fight. You said that you would fight Barrera only at a catch weight of 128 in your next fight. And if he didn't want to do that, you were going to go immediately to 130. So can you be talked into fighting Barrera at 126 again? Bueno, ¿qué es lo que significa eso? ¿Sí o no? Mira, eh, mira, yo, 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 de, yo, 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 yo entiendo lo que dijo. Okay. Yo no tengo ningún problema en pelear con Barrera. Yo no le tengo miedo. Ni tampoco me molesta como a él cuando le hablan de mí. Es parte de mi trabajo. Por mí, si quieres pelear, siguiente pelea con mucho gusto. ¿En 26? 28. Yo no puedo bajar a 126. Okay. Pero yo no puedo estar jugando con una persona que, que hoy dicen sí, mañana no. Yeah. Yo no dependo de ese tonto. Yeah, he understood everything you said, and the, re the, re the reply is, I'm not afraid of Barrera. We can fight him at any time. I can't fight him at 26, but I'll be happy to fight him at 28. All right, so you're never going to fight him at 26. You're saying no matter what your promoters and managers tell you. No, no puedo pelear en 126. No, yeah. cannot fight at 26. Okay, so you're going to propose to fight Barrera at 128, and if he rejects that, the next fight we will see you in 
is at 130 pounds, correct? Entonces tú vas a proponerle barrera eh, o a, a tu gente que peleen a 128 y si no se hacen 128, la próxima pelea tuya será en 130. Así es, yo creo que tienen... Yo, aquí está Bob, que puede decir más, más que nadie, quién es el que se encarga de hacer las peleas. Yeah, uh, absolutely, but Bob is the one that uh, makes the fight. All right, then let me, ask, let me ask Bob, do you accept what he has just said as a fact of his future life? Well, I'm not getting in the ring and fighting. He has to get in the ring and fighting. So whatever makes him comfortable, he has to give the performance. We're going to have to go along with whatever he says. In that case, we can say to you, you've been a great featherweight, and we wish you luck as you move up in weight. Entonces te podemos desear lo mejor porque has sido un gran peso pluma y te deseamos lo mejor cuando subas de peso. Muchas gracias y espero, espero verlos pronto. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. JB? All right, Larry, thank you so very much. So, Eric Morales, workmanlike effort, as Jim Lampley indicated, as he wins impressively over a guy who was game, as Jim Lampley said, if anything.